As a beginner, creating fills on the spot that fit the groove and fit the song can seem really daunting. I get it, I've been there. If you're struggling with this, where nothing feels right in your fills, you're, you're self-conscious about them and you're losing confidence in your creative ability, then today's lesson is for you. I'll be breaking down five unique groove fills you can find in tons of songs and we'll be figuring out what kinds of fills fit or don't fit these particular grooves. This will be a lot of fun. By the end of today, you'll have a helpful sort of a rule of thumb that, uh, that'll help you a lot with crafting fills that fit the groove that sound awesome and that leave you feeling like a total pro as you play songs authentically and with great feel. This is gonna be such a huge confidence boost and it's gonna give you so much clarity and it's gonna be a lot of fun. You could do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. So glad you're hanging out today. I hope self-taught beginner drummers know what to practice so they can nail songs, so that you can play songs well and be able to play with a band. And ultimately, I want you to be that drummer other people want to have in their band, that other people want to jam with. And this is absolutely gonna help you do it today. And hey, I've got a free gift for you. If you're dealing with a weak hand at all, if there's galloping in your singles, if you're struggling to play smooth, quick fills around the kit because of that weak hand holding you back, I want you to grab my totally free e-guide that'll help you solve your weak hand and build fast fluid chops that you can apply to the full drum set. What's really cool about this is these are just three practice pad exercises. If there were just three pad exercises that were the only three you were allowed to do every day on your practice pad, these are the three. These have helped me a ton, they've helped my students a ton, they will help you. So three daily pad exercises for fast fluid hands, even if you just got 30 minutes a day, this is gonna help you so much in evening out your hands, getting them nice and smooth, increasing your coordination and your time in the process. And then when you get on the kit, you'll find yourself freely flowing around the drum set and uh, that'll be a huge confidence boost for you. So be sure to check that out, totally free, no brainer in the description below. So a student of mine really recently asked a really good question and the question was, how do I create fills that fit the groove of the song? And so this prompted a conversation. We're kind of analyzing and brainstorming and I was like having to think, okay, what is my process? Like what is a way to really sum this up and boil this down? What is like a general rule of thumb where if we just follow this one thing all the time, we'll always have a feel that fits the groove. And um, so the result of that conversation and that coaching session is what I'm sharing with you today. And so I hope this helps you out a bunch too. Here's what it is. Here's the rule of thumb, and so I want you to keep this in mind as we go through these uh, groove type examples today. Take the rhythm of the groove and build that into your fills. Super simple, it's not rocket science, and I'll show you how we're doing that in these five different examples. And so we're gonna do five very different feeling grooves. Hopefully at least one of these will be very familiar to you, like, oh yeah, I play this one all the time, or oh yeah, that sounds like that groove from, from that favorite song. And so we're gonna see what fills we can come up with that fit the particular groove, as well as what fills don't fit. And so this will be a lot of fun of trial and error. Kind of your challenge today is, uh, you know, this is not a, a super linear step-by-step -step sort of lesson. I'm not giving you a step one and a step two and a step three and follow the foolproof steps and then you'll, you will have mastered this. This lesson doesn't really work that way. I'll just be straight with you. I'm, I'm showing you a lot of stuff. I'm sharing with you a lot of musical examples and uh, you know things that I think fit and don't fit and how to go about this. And so it's also very conceptual, but very musical and very practical at the same time. And ultimately, you've just gotta take this and run with it and work at this yourself. It's kinda of like improvising. We talked about improvising in a recent lesson where I told you, you know, there's not you know just three steps to follow to improvise. You just have to do it. You just have to make yourself do it. And so I wanna hopefully give you the, the tools here to get started. And um, I hope that you're feeling encouraged and empowered to go and do this yourself. So let's dive in. Five different groove examples. So number one is literally a song, um, Vultures by John Mayer. This is one of my favorite songs, it's so cool. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to the live in LA, live at the Nokia Theater, where the light is, that version of it, that's my favorite. Steve Jordan on drums, and he just lays down this really great groove. Uh, my snare is not tuned as deep as his, so uh, I'm not gonna sound quite like him, besides the fact I'm not Steve Jordan. But the groove is basically this. And so on. It's a two bar groove, super simple. It's basically just money beat with a couple of extra kick notes thrown in there in the end. Now. 
What's interesting about this example, there's not a single fill in the song. There are a couple moments where he slightly kind of opens up the hi-hats a little bit, but not really. And that kick drum pattern doesn't really change and there's not really any fills. So your challenge here as you're thinking through this along with me is, okay, let's say we were going to play fills in Vultures by John Mayer with this group. What kind of fill would we play? Well, here's the kind of fill I don't think we would play. That would be so obtrusive and interruptive to the song, even if it were something like this. Even something like that, it's like it's too staccato, it's too angular, it's too triangular and uh, like in your face. So what would be a fill that would actually fit? Well, here's what we have to think about. Remember the rule of thumb. Take the rhythm of the groove and build that into your fills. So this is a two bar groove and the second bar of it, it always ends with a It all fits around the guitar riff. If you haven't heard the song, go listen to it. When you hear the guitar part, it'll all make sense. This groove is coming from the guitar part. So we have this doom, doom, boom, boom. So if we were going to play a fill here in this song, it would need to be something very eighth note based. We wouldn't want to play a single 16th note because there's no 16th in this song. It's very eighth note, boom, doom, ba, doom, 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 ga. Very just driving eighth notes right here, but still a very chill kind of feel. So if we were to play a fill, maybe it should be something like, Does that make sense? I still think, I, I think in, in, a, in a song like Vultures, don't play a, don't play a single fill. <laughs> I would not play a single fill because I think it, that, that song is all about that guitar part and that relentless guitar part. And so it's just not a song that needs fills. But if we were going to play them in that song or in a song with a groove like that, I think those types of fills would work. So the main thing you notice there is that they were very eighth based and that they kind of fit with that kick drum pattern. Because remember the kick drum pattern, Mm -hmm. So we're thinking three and four and one. So what kind of fills can we build out of three and four and one? Three, ba, ba, mm, uh, or three. Doom, ba, doom, bum. That's kind of just the way to think. It's there in the kick drum pattern. So let's build our fill out of that. Okay, example number two. I call this the pocket groove. I don't know if that's a good name for it, but basically it's this groove right here. It's that groove that if you were alive in the late 70s, early 80s, you heard this a bunch. That was before my time, but hey, I've gone back and I've listened to all that stuff. Uh, like Michael Jackson, Rock With You. Uh, John Robinson on drums, that's a great recording. Go listen to that one. That's not the specific song we're talking about here, but just think about in general, a song, think like 1979 or so. It's a very dead snare sound, a very dead punchy kick, and the groove is basically just that one, two, a three, four, one, two, a three. So, okay, let's say that's our groove. Well, at this point, what's interesting, you know, in our first example, that was very quarter note and eighth note driven, but now we've got the 16th note, a three. So suddenly, because of that pair of kick drum notes, if we take our rule of thumb, apply that rhythm, well, we could play that going into beat four. So we could go. That's the obvious one. That's the no brainer to me. And that feel we do here in rock with you and we hear that in songs like that. We could even add a little hi-hat splash after that. We could go. Especially for doing 16ths on hi-hats. Or we could go to the, the rack tom on the and of four, like that. But even without anything on the and of four, just the ba ba, it feels right. And I think the reason it feels right is because we're pulling that from the kick drum pattern. The kick drum pattern has a, we have that quick 16th pair. So I think any fill that we play that has pairs of 16ths works really well. So what if we developed that a little more and needed a longer fill, maybe,
We can get a little weirder and do doom, ba doom, 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 ba. That feel, I think, is a little weird because it's so spacey and syncopated, but I think it still fits because we've got those pairs of sixteenths. And I think that works too if we did something with the ands there. Boom, da da, doom, doom, da da, boom, boom. Technically, we kind of deviate from the kick drum pattern at that point, but we still have the pairs of sixteenths. Now, if we look at Rock With You by Michael Jackson specifically, the introduction fill in that song is the... I did it a little bit slower there. I'll go even slower. That was the fill that, uh, that John Robinson came up with on the spot to kick the song off. Obviously that fits. I'm not going to argue with John Robinson and Quincy Jones. That's an amazing fill that fits the song so well. So in that case, we're taking even more syncopation liberty, throwing in even more notes. And I think because the kick drum pattern has that kind of feel, and by the way, in Rock With You by Michael Jackson, John Robinson is not playing that every time, but the bass has that feel. So even if there's not a kick drum note there, there's a bass note. So anything that has kind of that syncopation, I think you could even play something like, I think any kind of syncopated fill ends up fitting pretty well with that. So that kind of brings us into a related groove, a related groove type. Example number three here. I'm just calling it the, the syncopated groove example, but specifically a 16th based uh of two feel. So something to listen for whenever you're learning a song on the drums and you're paying attention to kick drum pattern, is it a one and three kick pattern? So if it's money beat, it's One and three, maybe it's something like. Maybe it's got eighth notes, but either way, that's one and three, because there's a note on one, there's a note on beat three. But what if the groove is an and of two groove? That would be something like this. Because we're hitting the and of two, one and two and. But what about the of two? What if we go one and the two and ah, uh, ah, uh, boom. It takes on that syncopated feel. The song that immediately comes to mind, I think it's called The Man That Can't Be Moved or The Man That Won't Be Moved. I'm just now thinking of it, uh, so I didn't look it up ahead of time, by the script. That song, the whole groove is like... Uh... So just an example of one of those songs that has that uh of two kind of groove feel. So let's say that's our groove feel. It's very, you know, 16th bass. It's kind of syncopated. Maybe we've got 16ths going on here. There's a lot of options for fills, and I think for the most part, you can't really go wrong here. But again, let's go back to our rule of thumb. What if we just play a fill that hits that of two? Boom, 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 boom. We could easily go. I think that you can play anything you want to for a full measure, and if you emphasize, if you hit an accent on that uh of two, it just makes it feel right. In other words, leave out beat three and hit the, the uh of two instead. So instead of playing a fill like, that was very square, three, well that wouldn't really make sense because we've got that uh of two feel. So we wouldn't want to play, That was like way too square and like straight and on the beat. 
We don't want to do that. We want to hit the uh of two, which means leaving out beat three. One and a two and ah, uh, boom, ba, two, two. Even if you do some silly triplet thing like that, as long as we go, we hit that of two and then the and of three to kick us back in. I think it just feels right and it works. And of course, there's a whole host of simple fills you could just play on beat four, like. The simpler or shorter the fill is, the the less, I guess the more room for error. Let, more room for error, that'd be the way to say it. You could kind of play whatever you want to there, and it's going to be just fine. Because unlike vultures, where we want to stick to very simple eighth note stuff, with this kind of groove, we can do all the sixteenths we want, because it's got that sixteenth feel. We're given permission by the kick drum pattern. All right, let's kind of shift gears here and go to something a little slower. So groove number four. The slow worship Tom jungle drums groove. So uh, this is for you fellow church drummers out there. Even if you're not, you've probably heard songs kind of like this. But if you play a lot of modern worship music in church, you play a lot of songs where the groove is. It just happens all the time where you'll, you'll just be on the floor, Tom, like. Maybe you're hitting a snare on, on beat four, and maybe it kind of builds into something as the song goes. We hear that all the time in modern worship music. So what is a fill that's going to fit that kind of style? Well, we've got 16th syncopation, because we've got this whole dotted eight thing. Boom, 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 kind of has that lope to it, which is pretty cool. So that gives us some versatility. You know, we could play a lot of different things. But what I've noticed is that in a groove like this, because it's slow, it's broad, it's spacious, and it's big feeling, because it's a tom groove, it's very big feeling. If we were to play something like what I'm about to show you, I think it just wouldn't really fit the mood. It kind of just makes me laugh listening to it because it's like, well, that was weird. That was like a gunshot out of nowhere, like this bombastic. Gah, 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 gah. And so it's kind of silly and comical, I think, because it doesn't really fit in the mood, right? We've got this boom, doom, doom, this big epic tom thing. We've got long notes that are happening here. So this, this, this uh, example is interesting because we're not actually basing what we're doing off of the kick drum pattern, which is just four on the floor quarter notes. Instead, it's more based off of the mood and the feel of the groove as a whole, which is very big, broad, and epic. Boom, doom, doom, ba. So, what would be a good fill? Well, we've got a few options. I think a good one would be this. Anything that maintains that heavy beat for boom, doom, do, 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 ba, do, do, ba, boom, 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 ba, ba, boom, 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 do, 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 ba, boom, boom, boom. It's all about maintaining, like, what is the feel? What is the essence of this? What is the emotion of this kind of groove? And how do we, um, how do we not take away from that? You might have random weird song examples where there's like something bombastic that comes in, but maybe it leads into something that's totally different. One case I can think of is, um, I can't remember what the song is off the top of my head, but we've kind of got this thing going on. Basically there is a bombastic fill, but it leads into something totally different. and so. Kind of a side note, not to be a rabbit trail, but fills always set things up. Like they're they're either they're either gluing one section into another. They're either emphasizing the groove, emphasizing melody, reinforcing melody, or setting up a totally new feel. So if there is a bombastic fill that happens in a slow groove like that, it's because something bombastic is coming next in this case.
And so because we were ramping into a big groove, we played something a little crazier. But if we're trying to maintain the feel of that slow boom, 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 then we're gonna play a fill that fits that mood. Okay, final example, and this is definitely not a, uh, we're not covering every type of groove out there. It would take too long, but hopefully we've hit some bases here. We touched on this one a minute ago. Number five, the faster rock and of two groove. So that's just this right here. We've got a very distinct and of two kick pattern. One and two and two and four, usually followed by an and of three to lead us into that backbeat. One and two and two and four. And maybe there's an extra note on the and of one, like. Either way, that groove is really dominated by the feeling of that and of two. So, what's our rule of thumb? What kind of fill can we play that hits that and of two? We've got a lot of options because this is very eighth note based, so we could just play an eighth note fill. So those were fairly simple hitting the end of two. One of them we finished off with some sixteenths. Or maybe it could be something like, Or if we're doing something a little faster. A lot of times with faster fills, what can make them a lot more interesting is breaking them up by hitting certain accents. So instead of just playing or, you know, you could play a fill like that, but what if you broke it up and hit the end of two? Like, yeah, making sure in my head that's the end of two. When the end of two, and so you can immediately make a full bar of 16th fill fit that end of two just by going on the end of two. Does that make sense? So, or it could even be something like uh, a little bit simpler. And just remember that there is no rule written in stone that says you have to do all of these things exactly and you have to follow this rule of thumb exactly. That's kind of the, uh, the caveat here. This is music. That means that there are no hard and fast rules. This is not math. This is not geometry. This is not engineering. You know, this is, this is emotionally based. And so ultimately the question you have to ask yourself is, does this fill feel like this song? Does it, does it feel right? And you will develop those instincts over time as you listen to music a lot more, as you play a lot more, you learn more songs. But I hope that just the simple guideline of what is the main rhythm and main feel of the groove? How do we recreate that in fill form? Hopefully that rule of thumb helps guide you a lot here. And so I want you thinking about just how you can incorporate that yourself as you're improvising, as you're making up stuff, as you're playing songs. And um, so I got a couple questions for you, a couple things that um, we wanna wrap up with here. One, I just wanna encourage you and remind you that as you work at this stuff, over time, it'll marinate in your brain, you will get better at it, and you'll find that you are playing fills that fit the groove, and therefore the song, and that sound awesome. And so your playing will feel much more professional as you play the song authentically, which is a massive confidence boost because you'll feel like a professional drummer. You'll no longer feel self-conscious about your fills, like, oh, that was a bad fill. Then you're beating yourself up about the bad fill, and so then the next fill's bad too because you're not paying attention. You'll get to the point where you get in the groove, you get into the feel of what you're doing and every fill feels good. Maybe it's not, you know, it's not a John Robinson, Michael Jackson, rock with you fill. That's okay because we're not John Robinson. You do the best you can and you craft a fill that fits the song. And uh, I think these are really good guidelines for doing that. 
So like I said earlier, kind of the catch with this lesson is that it's not a step-by-step, -step, you follow these exact steps. I kind of just showed you a lot of, here's something that works or something that doesn't work and here's why. So how will you take this lesson and run with it? That's what I want you thinking about. The application is not as simple as just checking some boxes. You've got to really focus in on this and uh, really decide to dive in and take the initiative on it. So will you practice improvisation? You can do that. You could sit here and play a groove that you know and then think through, all right, what fills can I come up with? That's an awesome way to do this. You could listen to songs and create fills based on what you're hearing in the song. So you could do, like you could go listen to Vultures. Play along with Vultures by John Mayer and decide, okay, I'm gonna play some fills. What fills can I play that fit? That can be a really cool way to practice this, finding songs that don't really have a lot of drum fills and asking, okay, what if I'm playing with this band or this artist and they asked me to play some fills, what would I play? That's a really cool challenge. Or copy the fills that you hear, because remember that building up a, creating the ability to improvise fills starts with building up the mental repertoire. Yeah, we don't wanna just regurgitate the things we've heard, and we don't wanna just pull from a mental library, but that's how you start. You start by listening to a lot of songs, listening to a lot of music, and hearing the fills those drummers play, and then going deeper and asking yourself, why did they play that fill? Why did that fit with the groove? Oh, because of that rhythm in the groove, they put that rhythm in the fill, the fill fit with the melody. Okay, I get it now. And you start to understand the why and you become empowered to then improvise and do these things yourself. But it all comes with time, experience, listening to music, learning songs and playing with people. You can't rush this. Um, and I'm guessing if you're still here with me right now, hanging out today, you're not in a rush. And I love that about you. I'm so glad that you are patiently approaching this and you're willing to sit in this and soak in this and absorb this stuff and get better at being a musician because being a musician doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, you can learn some hacks that help your technique and that you know you can adjust your drum set and do those cool hackish things that happen instantaneously. But becoming a great musician who plays great sounding stuff, that doesn't happen overnight. It takes some time and you have to be patient with the process, but it is such a fun process. And I hope today's lesson has helped you have more fun and just have some, uh, have some direction. So hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. I hope it's been valuable to you. Don't forget, if you're dealing with a weak hand and you just want to be able to play fast, smooth fills, grab that free e-guide I told you about, the three daily pad exercises for fast, fluid hands to help you overcome your weak hand, even if you just got 30 minutes a day. It'll be a lot of fun, and uh, it'll really help you out. I know it helped me out, and it's helped my students too. So be sure to grab that, my free gift to you, in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Know that you can do this. You can absolutely do this. Just be patient and enjoy the process. Stay non-glamorous.